Okay, the next video that, uh, our next uh, print video from uh, my 3D printer is going to be for this desktop arbor press. Um, here's a printer of what it looks, picture of what it looks like when it's built. That's by this guy, uh, Andrew Sorg, back in uh, July of 2014. It's been a little while. But I looked at it and I thought, man, i got to have me one of these. <laughs> I just thought this would be a fun, handy thing to have. I actually think it'll be handy to assemble some of the stuff that I make out of uh, 3D printed parts. For example, sorry to swing you around so fast, but things like this car right here was really difficult to assemble. And since then I've printed out, you know, a, a nice uh, vice that I use for the similar kind of things. I press things together with that and uh, with that. But sometimes I think this will be a little bit handier. So let's... Uh, Anyway, this is the part. It's uh, the Desktop Arbor Press by Andrew Sorg from 2014. And like I said, I just gotta have it. So, let's, uh, here's the parts that I've 3D printed. Let me get the camera set up here. And, okay, it looks like I accidentally hit the stop button there, so <laughs> I'll restart the video, that's fine. Uh, let's see, let's get this thing assembled. Uh, you can see all the parts here. I printed them out in PTG, of course, because that's my only software end day anymore. Alright, let's stop moving the camera and start the sound. So, this is the base. Here's the part, that uh, the main part here. Now, I printed this in PTG, and I used some experimental settings. And uh, at the same time I did that, I also moved my printer. And I'm not really sure what happened here. You can see there's a really, really awful top layer here. And the same thing happened over here. I'm sure you can see that um, and all I can say is when I printed the gray piece I paid a little more attention and I sort of had trouble with the bottom layer I actually had to stop this print a couple times and if you can see this you know it started to lift up here and I thought maybe I just didn't get my bed prepared well enough and it may have been the case but then I wondered why is it got kind of this repeating pattern you know and that's when it made me think it might be that I moved my printer. It was on this table, and this is just a folding table. I mean, there's nothing special about this table. It's just some folding table. I had a piece of MDF on it, and, and you know, it moves around. If I try to shake this table, when the printer would on it, it would move around. So, you know, I was kind of surprised that I might have any kind of a resonance problem on the heavier furniture that I put the printer on. Uh, however, uh, it might be that it bounces up and down or and that might be the case. Uh, I don't know yet. Anyway, I'm just still experimenting with it. But uh, I slowed things down and I managed to get this print to work. Um, you can see here's kind of a difference going this way. It was on that second of uh, second to the last top layer and it was creating that pattern and I slowed things down and it made it less when it came back. And you know, it's still, you can see the info a little bit. But again, I was also using experimental settings, trying to go really fast. Um, so uh, I had less top and bottom layers and, you know, I was uh, experimenting with some fast settings. So that, that may have also had a lot to do with it. Uh, anyway, back to uh, the assembly. Some of the parts here, I haven't even taken the uh, material off. This is the, uh, the rim, the brim, I guess you call it, uh, which was, I thought, necessary for these parts because it just looked like they had way too little surface area really dark you can't see <laughs> way too little surface area for the uh, uh, contact with the print bed and I was had a couple issues where when you have something like that and you're printing on the top they start moving and they come loose uh, so having that uh, brim on there gave you know made them all have the same you know kind of kind of be one part on the bottom and uh, so they all shared the same surface area, so that helped a lot. So get that off of there. We'll clean these up as we go. So um, I think the first step would be to probably put this in here. Let's see if this should get right on there. And uh, we'll get these two nuts on there. I can peel off the, the rim good enough. Get one of these on. They should just thread right on. These things thread. This one was made with uh, this particular model 
made with good. Oh, I think I just broke that. <laughs> I did. Of course, I break one right off the bat. Man, I hate when that happens. <laughs> I tightened it just a little too much with my fingers, so it, it tells you this, this thing's not very strong. And I was a little worried about that with this thread. I was worried about this thread being too weak, and that's what I did here. I just pulled this thread almost completely off. We're going to let this continue the assembly anyway, just so we can see what it looks like, but obviously now I have to reprint this part. And I was actually thinking about remodeling this with a different uh, pattern here because I feel like when you're pushing down here, you're pulling up here and you're pulling against these layers. And I think it, we could use um, a thread pattern more similar to the one that's on here, which also was a push. This one was a push and, he, and, and the guy who made this model, if you recall, it, it, it's another video um, and I've linked to it and, and it's on YouTube. Um, you know, this one has, uh, he, he redid this model with the threads printed, these, these rods printed horizontally so that you can, so they have tension for both push and pull and you could use that technique here maybe. So. I don't know exactly how to do that yet. I mean, I'm just barely getting started with this stuff, but I just recently started playing around with Fusion 360 and I think I could do that. I think I can make a bolt that would come up through here. You know, so there would be a, a recess here on the bottom for you to put a bolt into and then uh, you could tighten it in and that, that would hold it. So this is just kind of a mock-up right now since I broke that part, but I'm gonna continue anyway because I'm gonna reprint that part. And then uh, that'll give me an opportunity to make a better looking part and uh, print it a little bit better. Like I said, maybe I'll learn how to do the 360 piece. Do the 360 piece uh, between on ends. So this is gonna go in here like this. And uh, this is gonna mesh with that and move it up and down. Just like this. And then this is gonna go on here. And I think I can just go ahead and put this on like this. I've never assembled this before, so I'm just kind of making this up as I go along. I'll try not to tighten these so tight. I didn't really tighten it that tight. You saw I was doing it with my finger, but I made that crack noise. And as soon as I heard that crack noise, I knew I broke something. That's okay, though. Right, we'll just snug these a little bit. And you can see there's still a little extra material on some of these. I can clean them up a little better, but... We don't want to be here all day. Let me get this done. It's looking good. All right. So now we've got that. I think this is the last one. Oh, we've got two for some reason. Do I print an extra one? May have printed an extra one of those because I might have anticipated breaking thing. Oh no, one goes in here. <laughs> all right. So this one will go in here. Here's where I want it, so I've got horizontal force there. Look at that, I can put some force on that even though I've already broken one of the parts. I, mean, I don't think I'm gonna be able to put much force on that though. <laughs> this seems more like a decorative piece than an actual use piece. If I hold this down, I don't know. No, that's pretty good. It's, I'm able to put some force on that. Put my finger in there. I don't want to pinch it any harder than that. So you know what I mean. So yeah, it's very possible I could have a part in here, and I could have something like this, uh, you know, with the holes in it, right? And I could have a, a part in there, and I could press something into a pin into a gear, or 
something. I'm talking about plastic parts, of course, that are 3D printed, not real <laughs> metal parts, of course, but there you go. Came out pretty good. Um, I think I'll have to reprint this base. Uh, just because I broke this bolt and it's part of the base. And like I said, I really wonder if it would make more sense to have a, sep a separate piece for this bolt. I have it printed horizontally in two halves. Uh, it would be bigger and you'd have to have bigger holes and maybe a different kind of thread. So it'd be a lot of work, uh, but it could be done. So there you go. Desktop Arbor Press. Well, here's my printer and uh, it's printing a replacement part for that uh, gray base that we just broke in the other video. You can see it's on much sturdier furniture than the table it started on. And uh, it wasn't super clear in the video, but what I was trying to say is I started out on the floppy table and I didn't have resonance issues and I've got it on sturdier equipment and I think I have resonance issues, which is weird. But I think there's a possibility that this center was kind of bouncy. This isn't real thick. I don't know, it's about the same thickness as the MDF, but I don't know. It seems to be okay now. It was probably the printer settings. Probably had nothing to do with the furniture. But, uh, you know what I'm doing. I'm printing a replacement part. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Thanks for everybody who watches. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, if you like the videos, hit the thumbs up button. If you don't, let me know. Uh, really appreciate the comments. Keep them flowing. It's helping me out a lot. Thanks a lot.